Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly blessed us with an opportunity to do great, 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 immense good for our souls. According to all appearances, and sometimes appearances can be deceptive, there are many challenging days ahead for the Muslim community here in North America. Which means what? Which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity to be patient. Allah ta'ala has given us an opportunity to be patient and thereby to do great, 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 immense good for our souls. Nothing in our religion has the reward of patience with the exception of fasting, which in the view of many is synonymous with patience. Many of the exegetes mentioned, commenting on this in a couple similar verses, A. بِالصِّلَامِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ بِالصِّيَامِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek the help of Allah with patience and prayer. That is to say with fasting and prayer. Ramadan shahr al sabr Ramadan is the month of patience. In any case, why do we say there is no reward except that equals or re equates the reward for patience? Uh, the Prophet sallallahu reminds us Al Hasanatu bi Ashuri and Thaliha. Al Hasanatu bi Ashuri and Thaliha. Ila Sabi Miyade. Ila Adafin Kathira. The good deeds that you do. Your prayer, your recitation of Quran, your awrads, your umrah, your hajj. Whatever you are commanding the good, forbidding the wrong, your sadaqah, your assisting people, your visiting the sick. Etc. All of these deeds are multiplied ten times over, seven hundred times over, many times over and beyond that, but they have a numerical limit. As we mentioned specifically, with the exception of fasting in terms of our deeds directly. So, Kul Amal ibn Adam alahu, Wal Hasanatu bi Ashriyam Thaliha. وقال الله عز وجل إلا الصيام فإنه لي وأنا إزيبي. So Allah exempts from that multiplication of the deeds the fast, except fasting. That is mine. I will reward the nation, the fasting person. The ulama they say that the reason fasting is exempted is because it embodies patience. And the reward for patience has no numerical limit. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ The patient ones will be given their reward with no numerical limits. بِغَيْرِ <laughs> حِسَابٍ So patience is rewarded with no numerical limits. In many instances in the Quran, we find the reward of patience mentioned after the mention of tremendous difficulty and struggle. For example, Allah Ta'ala mentions, that surely you will be tested. Emphatically. By Allah, you will surely be tested with something of fear. So it won't be overwhelmed. Some people are apprehensive now. But they go about their daily business. 
do not overwhelm be shayim min al wal ju'a and something of hunger. Some Muslims are tested with starvation right now. Places like Syria or other places. But that's not the overwhelming, the dominant condition of the 1.7 billion Muslims on the face of this earth. Most Muslims are well fed. And the great cuisines of the world, most of them are Muslim. The Turkish, the Iranian, the Afghani, look at the restaurants in the area. The North African, the couscous, the shawarma, donor kebab. It's all Muslim. Mantu, bulani, ash, kaburi. It's all Muslim. Muslims eat well, generally. Be shayin min al khawf, wa and a loss of wealth and lives and fruits. Give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. In the face of that loss, in the face of those tests, give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. Allah Ta'ala mentions elsewhere in words that are, are incredibly prescient in terms of our current situation. That surely you will be tested in your wealth and in your persons, and you will hear from some of those given the scripture before you, not all of them, because some of them are friendly, wonderful people, and from some of the idolaters, and then kithira, much abuse. So if you're hearing much abuse, against your religion, when you turn on the radio, if you hear much abuse on the tongues of some of your co-workers, the more ignorant amongst them, then know this is only something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us about for over 1400 years ago, that surely directly addressed, addressing the the community of the Prophet وسلم, but it's relevant for everyone after and thereafter. <coughs> but if you patiently persevere in the face of that abuse, in the face of that foul language, and you remain mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mindful of your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ umur. Then that is the demonstration of resolve in your affair. And that places you or adorns you or allows one to adorn himself or herself with one of the characteristics of the greatest of the messengers and prophets to faith, to walk upon this earth. They're called Ulul Azim. Ulul Azim. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ umur. So this is a characteristic befitting Noah and a characteristic befitting, befitting Abraham and a characteristic befit, befitting Moses and a characteristic befitting Jesus, and a characteristic befitting Muhammad, alayhimu salatu wa salam, fa'inna dhalikim al-azm al-umur. And what does the Allah Ta'ala say to his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the face of the abuse, the persecution, the hardships, and the difficulties that he encountered? Fasbir. Fasbir kama sabra ulu al-azmi min al-rusul. Patiently persevere, O Muhammad. Fasbir, ya Muhammad. That's not mentioned, but the, the address is directly to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fasbir, patiently endure. Kama sabra ulul azmi min al-rusul. As those great messengers who preceded you, 
endured and persevered and were patient. And don't be hasty in dismissing your people and writing off your people and turning your back to your people and responding to hatred with hatred towards your people <coughs> or bigotry in the face of bigotry. As uh, Kipling says, and if you can be hated, not yet give way to hating. If you can keep your head when all about the losing theirs and blaming it on you, very appropriate for our day and time. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, yet make allowance for their doubting too. <coughs> if being hated not give way to hatred, these are the messages that we need to take the heart, brothers and sisters. Because these are the times, and times, it's in times like this, where the opportunity to manifest prophetic characteristic is called for. To have the prophet, the patience rather, that the prophets displayed. To have the good opinion of people that the prophets displayed. What is the opinion of the Prophet towards the people of Ta'if when they, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they stoned him, when they humiliated him, when they turned the imbeciles and the children of the city and unleashed them against him in a humiliating tirade of abuse? Perhaps there will arise from their progeny those who will worship Almighty God. When the angels invited him to call upon them to bring the great mountains down upon his enemies, he refused to do so. When at the height of the battle of Uhud, a very desperate situation where defeat was snatched, victory rather was snatched away, and then a, a, a very psychologically traumatizing defeat was inflicted upon the Muslims and in the, the, the thick of the fray, when so many good people are falling, Hamza or Musa bin Rumayr and others, and they implore the Prophet, and the Prophet Sallallahu he's desperately wiping his blood from the injuries on his mouth, on his uh, cheek rather, and his mouth, and they asked him why. He said, if, if the blood of the prophet hits the ground during the battle, then God will bring his wrath down upon his enemies. And then they asked him to pray against them. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rahmatan. He said, I wasn't sent to curse people. <coughs> I wasn't sent to damn people. I wasn't sent to invoke the wrath of God down upon people. I was sent as a mercy. <coughs> Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was sent as a mercy. So brothers and sisters, patiently persevere. Despite the trials, the tribulation, no matter how difficult they might seem to be, no matter how daunting they might appear, persevere. Forge on and know that you have a righteous cause, that you embody the very best of human behavior and characteristic if that characteristic reflects the prophetic virtues that we've been taught. Our Prophet he said in explaining his mission. And there are other explanations, but this was one he emphasized. إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ مُعَلِّمًا I've been sent as a teacher. I've been sent by, as a teacher. And so in the face of ignorance, what better thing can we do than to teach people? In the face of ignorance, what better thing can we do than teach people? 
Ignorance only exists in the absence of truth. Darkness only exists in the absence of light. Truth comes and falsehood perishes. Falsehood reigns, especially falsehood concerning the Muslims in our community because we have not brought the light of truth to our neighbors, to our co-workers, to our fellow citizens. We have a calling, brothers and sisters, and it doesn't involve something glamorous or something that requires focused groups to determine what to do. Just be yourself and tell people who you are. Just be yourself and share your religion with people. Be yourself and explain to people how this or that fallacy relating to Islam is not true. Invite people to your homes. Invite people to the library. Invite people to the mosque, to the masjid, so that you have an opportunity to explain yourself for yourself and not to have yourself misrepresented by someone else. So patiently persevere. Ajaban li amri mu'min. The affair of the believer is amazing. His affair, her affair, all of it is good. And that's for no one except the believer. If some good befalls him, if some good befalls her, he or she, they thank God for his graces and that's best for them. Every good you enjoy, brothers and sisters, the freedom you enjoy, the food that you enjoy, the clothing that you enjoy, the shelter that you enjoy, the safety and security that you enjoy, despite all of the tension in the air, no one's fearing right now that some lunatic will run in here and perpetrate some ghastly crime against us. We sit here in safety and security. That's a great blessing. Thank Allah for that blessing. Thank Almighty God for that blessing. Let them worship the Lord of this house. And an aspect of our worship is shukr, is thankfulness, is gratitude. Let them worship the Lord of this house. The one who has fed them and driven hunger away from them. And made them secure for prayer. Brothers and sisters, we should be absorbed in our worship as gratitude to our Lord for feeding us and driving hunger away from us and for blessing us with safety and security in our homes, in our places of worship. As we go to and forth, back and forth in the streets conducting our business. And there are exceptional incidents that happen here and there, but they're statistically insignificant. Four, five, or six incidents. Seven, eight, ten incidents. <laughs> in a country of 319 million people. Since the election, people are tense and uptight that the elections have unleashed all of these, these uh, nasty and putrid for, uh, forces that we thought we overcome by and large. But despite that, have any Muslims in this country been shot since the election? <clears throat> Killed or abused? There are incidents. But how many people have died in car accidents <coughs> since the election of the president-elect? How many people have died in the strangest of ways? 
that we don't even take note of. No Muslims have perished. We should thank Allah for that, as opposed to working everyone up into a frenzy that leaves them vulnerable to their faith being eroded. We should strengthen people's faith and work to, to reinforce their faith, their, their faith so that if things do happen, they will have the strength and the fortitude, the word of thought to forge on and to be patient and to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to trust in Almighty God that His promise is true. That His promise is true. And that this world is just a test. It's not the end of things. One of the terrible, terrible conditions or situations we see afflicting many of our young people is that they're affected by an intellectual paradigm that's rooted in neo-Marxist atheism. That there's nothing beyond this world. Therefore, all justice has to be secured now. All good has to, uh, has to accrue to a person now. And that if justice is not forthcoming, if good does not accrue to the person, then one has to engage in desperate means to ensure that it happens because this is all there is. If you're a Marxist, this is all there is, this world. If you're an atheist, this is all there is, this world. But if you're a believer, we believe that there's something beyond this world. We believe there's something greater than this world. We believe that this world is so insignificant it doesn't even weigh, uh, it's, it's significant, doesn't even equate the wing of a mosquito. This is the dunya. As we mentioned on several occasions, were you to take the hundred years, if you had a good long life, and hopefully a hundred healthy years, and not 60 healthy years and then 40 torturous years that you wish you never experienced, that it was all over at 60. But 100 healthy good years, what would that look like if we placed it on a continuum that started with the creation of the heavens and earth and extended into eternity? Because paradise or hell are reality that will extend until eternity with no end. What would that hundred years look like? You couldn't even begin to measure it. But there are those who would jeopardize eternal bliss for some passing, fleeting gratification in this world. This is, how, this is not how a believer sees it. A believer understands there's no perfect justice in this world. A believer understands perfect justice is with God. A believer understands that there is no unrequited suffering in the world. That suffering will be rewarded. Patience in the face of suffering will be rewarded. This is what a believer understands and believes to the very depths of his or her, or her soul. May Allah give us patience. <coughs> Imam al-Shakti, he mentioned if one chapter in the Quran only was revealed, it would have sufficed the people. <coughs> By the witness of time or the passing ages or the declining day, verily humanity is lost. The only exception, except those who believe الصالحات, and they do righteous deeds and they counsel each other with truth and they counsel each other with patience. So brothers and sisters, be patient and understand that your patience, as we mentioned, has an unlimited reward. 
أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ And understand these are days where patience is required. We say this in conclusion. As we're reminded by our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فِي آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ قِيَامٌ تُسَمَّى أَيَامَ الصَّبْرِ At the end of time there will be days that are called, which are called days of patience. وَالْقَابِدُ فِيهَا عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِدِ عَلَى الْجَبْرِ And one who holds on to their religion during that time is like one holding a smoldering ember, a red-hot ember, like those charcoal briquettes when you barbecue in the summer. And you just put the lighter fluid on. And they're red and glowing. Imagine holding one of those in your hand. That's how difficult it will be to hold on to your religion. And we, the ulama, our scholars, teach us that the reward for an act is commensurate to the difficulty of the act. So if it's different, that difficult to hold on to your religion, what is the reward? And the reward for one who continues to practice, who continues to act, who continues to hold on, is like the reward of 50 men. <laughs> 50 from them or 50 from us, minkum. 50 from you, 50 companions. The reward of the one who continues to hold on will be like the reward of 50 companions. So brothers and sisters, hold on. Be patient. Forge on. Continue to do the good things that you do. Work to improve your religion and to refine your religion. Work to grow, grow closer to the Qur'an as each passing breath draws you closer to your death. Study the life of the Prophet ﷺ to understand the tremendous challenges he was faced with and how he patiently persevered through them. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكن أسأل المؤمنين يقوم استغفر الله استغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وكرة أعيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كبيرا إن الله وملائكته يصعدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله in the face of all of the difficulties and challenges our Prophet endured sallallahu alayhi was able to smile. The sadness was in his heart and not on his face. So may Allah bless us to be able to smile. May Allah bless us to be able to celebrate life. It's a struggle, but it's a struggle punctuated by many opportunities for celebration. It's a struggle punctuated by many opportunities for leisure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to take advantage of those opportunities with families, with friends, to share a meal, to share the outdoors, to hike and to ski and a lot of good skiing this winter. And to do other things that bring happiness into our hearts and that rejuvenate us so that we're better prepared to go back into the struggle. And that's what life is. It's a struggle punctuated by moments of leisure and celebration, and then those rejuvenate us and reinvigorate us, and we jump back into the fray with greater resolve and greater energy. And then we celebrate again. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyid al سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين
وكونوا مع الصادقين وكونوا مع الصادقين اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين إنهم هيأمروا بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اللهم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا لا تزل قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا فت علينا الصبر واثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا فت علينا الصبر واثبت أقدامنا وتوفنا مسلمين واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وكهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعل به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثحرا على من ظالمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تصعب علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعف عنا وعف لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم خفف عن المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم فرج عن المسلمين في كل مكان أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكمل الصلاة